Elliot. How are you? I'm doing great, Heather. How are you doing? I'm so well, and I'm happy to have you on the show today. Thank you for joining me. Thrilled to be here. Well, Elliot, tell me a little bit. I, I'm all about family, and as my audience knows, I love to talk about our kids and our teens and things going on, and I want to hear all about your family. Well, that's a great question. I have 28-year-old twins <laughs> scattered around the country. I have a uh, stepson with a baby that lives a few minutes from us, and I have a stepdaughter with a 10-year-old that lives right in our, my house. Um, and then we started the charity for our son who's no longer with us. Wow. Y'all are busy. I love family. I'm with you. Can't yeah. get more family centric. Your life is full. Yes. It is definitely full. So you and your wife started a foundation back in 2015. And that's what I'm very interested in talking about today. And it's called A Brighter Day which I love the name of the foundation. It's so uplifting and positive and happy, but this came about under very unhappy circumstances. And I'm so sorry, Elliot, that Thank I'm you so, so much. sorry. Thank you so much. So what we did, Heather, we started this charity because in 2015, my 19 year old son, who was a sophomore at the University of Montana, walked up to the highway and jumped in front of an oncoming truck and took his life. And we were frantically looking for him. We knew something was off. He hadn't told us what was going on. He hadn't shared what was going on. Uh, it just didn't, it just felt all wrong. And at 6.30 at night, after we were looking for him all day, and he had been gone since 1.30 in the morning, no drugs, no alcohol. At 6.30, Federal Express arrived with a six-page suicide note. And in it, the first large paragraph, it said, Mom and Dad, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I never would have told you how I felt. I never would have asked for your help. And I never would have taken your help. Mm. I must have read that, Heather, a hundred times going up to Montana to claim his body, to bring it back for burial, and then the same thing on the way home. And I realized at that moment on the way home that we're going to be victims of this suicide our entire lives. And now they call us survivors, which I'm not sure I like that name. But we're going to be victims. We have to do whatever we can in our power to stop other families, other parents from experiencing this tragedy, this loss, this devastation. And so we came up with the idea of bringing resources on stress and depression to teenagers. And we started with music like Battle of the Bands, live band showcases of teens playing for teens. And in the first two years, giving out backpacks filled with these resources. And it's all original content. Uh, we handed out thousands of these backpacks at our concerts. And then COVID hit and we had to pivot and these became virtual teen talent showcases. And now we've realized that, and we still do the talent showcases, we realized the best way to reach teens is actually through their parents. And I know you've got a great audience of moms there mm -hmm. um, that we, and we can go back over that, how. Maybe I can come up with some ideas on how moms can get closer to these teens in trouble because a lot of times they're not communicating this, like in my house, that we're not. But we came up with the idea of working with parents, and now we've created the website, a brighterday.info, that's full of hundreds of resources. It's got a teen survival toolkit that's free on TikTok, free on a website, free on Instagram for teenagers. We've got a parental survival toolkit that's free in places including Facebook now. And we have gone from a mailing list of 1,800 to last month we had 14,000 people download our resources. Just last wow. month. Wow. That's, more That's than amazing. Right here. That's amazing what's going on. <laughs> and it's growing uh, geometrically, exponentially, whatever word you want to use in there. We're just becoming very relevant. There's no advertising on our website. Uh, we raise money separately from what we do with parents and teens, totally separately. But the idea is that if we can create resources for teens and their parents, then we can help stop teen suicide. And that's our ultimate mission. Yes. Yes. Well, it anxiety and depression. I mean, Elliot, I talk to so few moms now who don't pull me to the side. I mean, it's never publicly, but they will pull me to the side and say, my daughter is now on antidepressants. I don't know what to do. You know, my 
My son is depressed. It, I mean, I, I feel like everywhere I turn and you see these kids out and like, you know, you're Jake. Um, you didn't see any signs before, I'm sure, or you would have taken note. But and they're not seeing signs. It's just beforehand. There's no notice. There's no, you know, they're smiling. They're up on top of the pyramid. They're hitting the baseball at the baseball game. They're cheering. And I, I don't I don't know what's going on, Elliot. Help me out with this. Well, it's really sad what's going on. I know for Jake mm -hmm. um, and it, it, any parent who's experienced this knows that there's an empty hole for life. It doesn't go away. He's my screensaver. He's the eight by ten right by my television set. It's something you have to live with, but the hole never really goes away. Mm -hmm. But what he, what we noticed and what made me feel so uncomfortable was when he came home for Christmas break, shortly before he took his life, his sleep pattern was interrupted and his eating pattern wasn't right. And we talked to him about it. Are you feeling sad? Are you, no, I, I'm i not. He said, but what I was, and he said, when I was in high school, I thought about suicide. Well, apparently more than half the kids in high school now think about suicide at least mm -hmm. once. It's I believe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's not unusual, but we talked about it and he seemed fine. But when he left to go back to school, he couldn't hug me. He couldn't look me in the eyes. Hmm. And I felt so uncomfortable. The following weekend, I wanted to go up there and talk to him. And I, we overrode that. Everybody got on my case that I was overreacting. On Monday or Tuesday, he played an ice hockey game because he played ice hockey at in, in Montana, and he scored seven goals. Wow. And they actually have retired his jersey at the at the rink there. And but that wasn't good enough because on Thursday night he took his life. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't enough satisfaction for him at all. Um, so there are there are definite signs for parents to look for, uh, but they're not easily easy signs. You're right. You just said it. Sometimes we're the last ones to know. And in our case, I feel like I was the last one to know. Um, his friends told me after he died that the one thing they noticed there, Heather, was that he was always sleeping when they were awake and he was awake when they were sleeping. Hmm. So sleep pattern disorder, eating disorder, they are both common for teens that are going through stress and depression. Of course, eating disorders, you can go to the website and there are thousands of places you can go to for teens. That has that's not necessarily depression. And sleep disorder is not necessarily depression. So that, that doesn't always give you a clear roadmap for what you need to do. No. And you don't know. I have a lot of moms that will say my my daughter is overly dramatic. You know, they don't know when it's serious and when it's not. And I had a, an adolescent psychiatrist come into a private club group that I curate about two weeks ago. And I've decided that no one really knows the exact signs to pinpoint to say, hey, this is serious. I mean, even the professionals are not 100 percent clear on when should we jump in? Well, here's here's some helpful hints because you've got a great audience there. Um, and let me give the most important hint on okay. how you can find out, not cure, but find out what's going on. And then I'll, I'll, if you're okay with it, I can give you some ideas on what to do with that. I would, point. We would love it. Okay. So it, everything has changed in teenagers' lives when, from when you and I were young. And I want you to know that your teen and everybody else's teen thinks their parents are about a thousand years old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no indoor plumbing, no automobiles, horses <laughs> were everywhere. You know, it's, 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 it's just, so true. It's so true. Right. And so, uh, Here's what's really happening in the reality of what's going on. And, and that is we live now in a two income world. We live in a 50% divorce world. There are a lot of single moms out there. There are a lot of second, third marriages out there. Uh, I have some clients that have had fourth marriages, which seems like, I don't know, you know why one would do that, but. <laughs> <laughs> a glutton for punishment, oh, apparently. Uh, but what's common there is that when you were young, when I was young, there were a lot of interactions between friends. Every weekend mm -hmm. after school, you were out playing, basketball courts were filled, streets were filled, fun stuff was going on, and you learned conflict resolution that way. You know, you learned uh, that if you had a fight on Saturday, on Sunday, you might need each other. Now today, if you and I have a fight and we're teens, your mom calls my mom and we come over, <laughs> They forced us to shake hands and we hit our heads and say, I'm sorry. And really nothing's been fixed. We just got for it. So that's one of the changes. 
Uh, there's everything is uh, organized sports nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, soccer and so forth. You can't when you drive by a basketball court at a school on a weekend. There's nobody on it. It's all organized sports. True. So, so again, that's changed. I never got three hours of homework a night growing up. Never. Mm -hmm. uh, two of my kids got three hours a night because they were taking AP classes. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's changed. And although my parents put pressure on me to go to college, they didn't say you have to go to, and I went to Rutgers. They didn't say you have to go to Rutgers or, or Yale or community school. They just expected, well, what you do when you graduate is you go to school. Now we're parents, we hover, we want really good education for the school, for them. We want them to get good grades. We want them to have good outcomes. And so we're putting more pressure, even if subliminally, or helicopter parents as we're called, we're putting more pressure. So what's happened to teens is they've now turned in, where once upon a time they turned out. And then part of the reason they've turned in is the cell phone. Their cell phone is their best friend, but it is it can be their worst enemy. Because their cell phone makes them be not social anymore. Mm -hmm. And when they start looking at Instagram, which was Facebook and, and TikTok, they begin to see that everybody's got a great life but them. Everybody's got a highlight reel going. And my even my kids, I think they were either seniors in high school or freshmen in college, my twins. And it was Christmas break, and I live in California, Northern California. And they said to me, Dad, are we the only family that doesn't go to Lake Tahoe or Hawaii during Christmas break? <laughs> I, now, I'm laughing because I've been hit with that before. With our older two, we'd go to camp in North Carolina, and they would come back to Mississippi when camp was over, and some of the other girls would fly to Spain or to Europe. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 so, it's crazy, yes. And so what's going on now is you as a mom – this is not a fault of being a mom. This is the reality of being mm -hmm. working hard to accomplish your goals and financial goals for your family and so forth is dinner comes around and dinner used to be in the very old days is you no cell phones, obviously no beepers. You just talked. You just, you talked about stuff. Right. That's God. Now, mm -hmm. now your teens have their phones open and they're texting each other. You've been working all day. You're texting people. Maybe your mom's calling during a dinner because she grandma's calling because she wants to talk to everybody. Um, you're hustling your your fanny off to get a dinner on the table because you've been working eight or ten hours and you're exhausted from the process. And you can't wait for this dinner to be over so your kids can go to the rooms and do their homework. And you can begin to relax a little bit from your day. Yes. That's the, that's the reality. <laughs> it so, is. Right. So now that opportunity for you as a mom to find out what's going on with your teen evaporates quickly. So this, are, this is my first suggestion to parents, and they would not be listening to you, Heather, unless they care to be a good parent. And I, most parents want to be good parents out there. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Absolutely. There's, there's a small percent of people that just don't have the skills or the, the upbringing or the, they have too much animosity. And they're just not going to do it. But most people are really good. So the first thing I suggest to families is put away the cell phones. Make every dinner a cell phone free dinner. Maybe put them in a basket. No texting. No having grandma call during dinner. Uh, which is the wait, mm -hmm. this is really healthy for their kids to talk to the grandmother. Great. Do it just before, just after, but just let dinner be about the parents who are home at that moment, or parent, and the teens. Because You've got to now, and let me use, use you, Heather, as the example. You're the mom. You've got to ask probing questions. And look, no teen wants to be asked that. It's no. <laughs> and I, have, I had two boys, and most times they grunted. I was schooled. Fine. <laughs> My son is getting two PhDs by a twin son, finishing two PhDs, two PhDs at the University of Wisconsin. So here he is, 28, great certificates. He answers me monosyllabically. How was school today? Fine. How are you doing? Okay. I, I have to remind him. I have to say, Cody, can you please answer me polysyllabically? I paid enough money for that to happen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have communication skills. I've paid for those. I understand. <laughs> and, and so we want you, mom, as a mom, as a parent, to ask questions and let me give you some simple questions that seem simple enough, but it's, how's it going at school today? 
what's your favorite class? Mm -hmm. Why is history, your, I'll make history or English, why is that your favorite class? What's your most difficult or challenging class? Why? How do you get along with the teacher? What your favorite friend is Jimmy. How's Jimmy doing chemistry class that you're struggling so much in? Are you both struggling with the teacher? Have you talked to the teacher? Mm -hmm. Can I help you talk to the teacher? Can I help you go to the counselor and see if we can solve this chemistry class issue so you don't get a D and have to repeat it? Yeah. <laughs> and these are probing questions and he seems simple and you might think, well, I asked them, said, but ask him every night because your teen will give you the right questions to ask. If your teen cares, your teen's going to turn around to you and say, hey, mom, okay, how was your day at work? And now you're in a dialogue. Yes. And they realize that, you know, mom has good days. And mom has bad days and I have good days and I have bad days and maybe this is normal. Exactly. I'm so happy to hear you say that, Elliot, because parents today concentrate on happiness. I just want you to be happy. I want my child to be happy. I just, I want my, I want to be happy. I want happiness for myself and not every day is going to be happy for you know anyone. That, and you know that being happy is a moving target. Yes. Uh, I just was talking to somebody yesterday and I was trying to explain sadness to them. And, and they said, do you think being sad is a sign of depression? It is. But being sad is not necessarily a sign of depression. You have a bad breakup in a relationship. Somebody passes away in your family. You really messed up studying for the test and got a bad grade. You're sad for doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's very normal. You don't need a drug. You don't need a psychiatrist to overcome this. You need to get through the sadness because it is one of thousand emotions that we as humans go through. We just have to learn how to deal with them. And a teenager has no experience in this. And therefore, if they're sad, they begin to rationalize out, Heather, that, well, I'm feeling kind of blue or black. Yesterday was mm -hmm. pretty crummy. Tomorrow doesn't sound like it's going to get any better. Why even bother? Nobody's going to miss me anyway. And so now we're sad. Down we're down a really sad road because mm -hmm. they feel their life is inconsequential and meaningless. And we don't want to get to that point because that's, that may be a point of no return. And you as a mom and you or, or parents, you are on the front lines of asking great questions and your teen will tell you everything you need to know. Said, so, well, I just don't get math. I just don't get it. I'm in there. I'm getting the worst grade in the class. I hate this. I'll never use this anyway. So I just want to get out of it. And that is telling you something that if you didn't dig a little bit, Heather, onto the math class or the history class or the chemistry class to find out that that's a struggle and that mm -hmm. they're not, maybe they're not even showing up anymore to it. They're sitting outside the class or they're hanging out in a courtyard somewhere because they don't even want to face it. Yeah. You will intersect that disaster before it happens. Because it's the little things, it sounds like, Ellie, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it sounds like it's the little things that add up to be the big thing. Is that? Right. The, the big thing is they broke up with their boyfriend or their mm -hmm. girlfriend. They did that. Right. And, they, and, they, and they think the world just came to an end. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. But the history class or the chemistry class that they're, they hate, they're going, it's a road. They're on a road. And then they're, you know, one thing I noticed with my son, I, I met with my son, Jake, in October at parents weekend at the, as a sophomore. And he was getting very different advice from mom and dad. And I felt bad for him. I, I come from where we, I, I was married for 18 years and divorced, I'm not divorced now for 20 plus years and remarried. And he said his mom wanted to be a wildlife biologist because he loved animals so much. Not because he wanted to be a wildlife biologist, but she wanted him to be that. I wanted him to just major in business or find something he could be good at uh, or be a doctor even because he loved that so much, mm. but, but that wasn't for him. So when I sat down with him in October and he died in January, he said, dad, I'm lost. And I said, well, what does that mean to you? I'm lost. We were at dinner, which just he and I, he said, I, I'm not doing well in chemistry and biology. I'm not liking it. I said, well, let's get you out of them. Let's get out of them. You don't have to do this. He said, well, if I get out of them, I can't be a wildlife biologist. That's what mom wants for me. Hmm. I said, are there classes you like? He said, I like math and I like history and English isn't bad either. And I like computers a lot. I said, well, let's go that, let's go that route. 
he could not get the courage to tell his mother that I don't want to be a wildlife biologist. So like a lot of people do, they get self-destructive. He just simply stopped going to those classes. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, right when he died, they could have failed him. They gave him a D in those two classes just to be nice. Um, but he was self-destructive. And now, instead of telling his mom that he wasn't going, he ended up taking his life. That was a road that he was on that he found that was a no way, no way to get off that road. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. rather than face the reality that, okay, like a lot of college students or even high school students, I'm on the wrong path. Let me take a step backwards and fix this and do something I really want to do. He took a turn for the worse, mm -hmm. cascaded into death. And that didn't have to happen if perhaps in that October, we really got tough on him and tough with him and said, well, let's go to the school right now and get you out of those classes because it is better to change classes than it is to fail those classes. Mm -hmm. And just be be willing and ready to pivot. I think every school and every yeah. person, again, wants the best for the student, but can they, but they see it through their own prism. So- mm -hmm you want to be a great mom it is very difficult for you to be a great mom looking at it through your the lens of your teens if you can it makes you unbelievably empathetic but you know most people again they're tired they're busy they're working they look through their own lens and their own experiences and that's not necessarily who your child is so true that is so true so your backpacks y'all have put these backpacks together you're giving them out at concerts. So what type of information is in the backpack? I'm so curious about this. Great. And all of this is on the website at abrighterday.info, abrighterday.info. And it's all free. There are no ads on this site. So what we did is we put, uh, if it's for the teen, we the first page is, are you feeling this way? And it's a series of maybe 10, 12, 14 things to see if you're feeling this way. If it's page two, it's, is your friend feeling this way? And hmm. page three is for the nosy parents that want to look at it too, that says, is your child feeling this way? Is your teen feeling this way? And then it talks about ways that you can begin to seek help. And, and to, that if you're feeling sad, what can you do about it? And of course, in there, we know that a lot of teens aren't sharing that. So we put in there to make sure that it's important to share this with your parents, as difficult as that might be, because they can help you. Since we created these backpacks now, we have two new programs that have come out. And the first one is any teen, anywhere, and any parent, anytime, 24-7, Heather can text 741-741, text there, the word brighter, B-R-I-G-H-T-E-R, -E and they, within five minutes, will get a counseling session right there. Oh, wow. It will last up to 45 minutes, and they can do it seven days a week. That's fantastic, Elliot. If that doesn't that's work, that's huge. That's huge. If that doesn't work, and they need to get in front of a counselor that's local, in all fifty states, they can go online to our website. We will hook them up with a counselor, a licensed counselor in that state. That now their parent has to be involved because the licensed counselors within each state. In the chat room, they don't. Parents don't even have to know this is going on. And I'm not suggesting that parents don't know. I think they they need to know. But mm -hmm. teens are teens, and I think my son would have probably gone to the chat room, but would never have gone to the live counseling because that would have to admit something. But he might have said the most popular thing that teens ask, am I, is, am I the only one feeling this way? Mm -hmm. And then he would have gotten an answer within five or 10 minutes. No, but how are you feeling? What's going on? How's your sleep? Mm -hmm. How are you doing in school? Have you talked to your mom or your dad? about how you're feeling. Have you thought about getting some live help on this? Because mm -hmm. the questions. sleep thing, Elliot, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. The sleep thing is, I mean, that is so common. You know, you just think, oh, that they're just teenagers. That's why they're up half the night. You and know, they, you're, you've are you really caused me to, to pause on this. Well, some of that is true. You know, teenagers yeah. are, are, are goofy no matter what. By the way, there's a difference between goofy I use the word goofy because it's a clean show yeah. <laughs> and, <Thank you. laughs> and depressed and sad. And so I, I was a stupid boy teenagers. And I have to tell you as a, as a man, I think all boys are basically stupid. 
to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and because it takes longer for them to develop. It just, mm -hmm. that's just anatomy. So I was not a depressed teenager, but I was a stupid or dumb or lots of, lots of things didn't make any sense uh, for me. And I liked math, but I had no idea how I'd ever used chemistry my whole life. Why, why bother? You know, and mm -hmm. I was one of those, but I, I worked my way through it, but I didn't fall asleep too late and I got up early and, or they're sleeping 14 hours a day. Just the opposite of what I just said, which is teenager. Every time they're growing, they're sleeping more because their body needs that. But those are also signs of depression. I don't want to get out of bed because I'm feeling sad. I don't want to face my day. I'm feeling sad. Or I don't want to deal with my mother. You know, I blew out my knee at a football game in high school. And I got a ride home, couldn't walk, crawled into bed so my parents wouldn't see me, waited the next morning till my dad left for work because I didn't want to face him, called my mother in a room to go to school, and my knee looked like a cantaloupe at that point, or honeydew. <laughs> and she looked at that. And she said, why didn't you put ice on it last night? And I said, because I didn't want to tell dad. So we do stupid things. Yes. And yeah. And so these are things that we have to engage. Again, nothing's going to uh -huh. be the engagement of you and your team and asking questions. And, you know, my dad and my mom, here I played football that day that I blew up my knee. And they didn't come in and say, how was your game? Mm. Yeah. Because if I said that, I would have said, okay. And they might have asked the next question, like, well, you're a quarterback. How'd you, how'd it go? Did you, anybody, did you score any touchdowns? Did you throw for any touchdowns? And we would maybe we would have had an engagement, and I might have said, you know, I actually got hurt. So yeah. that didn't happen. But now that was physical. Imagine if that's emotional, and I'm feeling super sad and depressed, and my parents just let it go because they mm -hmm. were busy. It was a, it was a I don't even know what night it was, but it was a bad night for them. Yeah, communication is key. Right, it's key. I don't know. Yeah, you can't make up for that as a parent. And again, every parent is busy, but wants to be a great parent. And those probing questions are unbelievable. Yesterday, I did a show, Heather. Uh, it was my first show I've ever done for just teens, the opposite of your show, mm -hmm. just teens. So I changed my language around a little bit. And I talked teen language, if I can do that. And I talked to the teens about how to probe their parents. Just the opposite of one. Oh, talking. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and I said, because your parents don't want to talk to you because they're busy. They worked all day. They got yelled at by their boss. They got a project that's due. Uh, they got relationship issues. They Things aren't working right. Probe your parents on their life. So let you be the parent So until they start being the parent back to you. That is great, Elliot. I, I love your mission. You know, your, your pain is your platform. That's so true, but you are helping so many people. You are you are going to make a huge difference, Elliot. You well, really you. are. You really are. And I, I had a conversation with a lady today at lunch and I said, you know, we need to go back to parenting like our grandparents did because absolutely. they communicated. They communicated. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be an empathetic person. Again, it doesn't work for everybody. You know, I can feel bad for you, but I need to be in your shoes also. And that's hard. So can you as a parent be in your teen's shoes? Because you were only a teenager yesterday. We know we know because <laughs> life is a blink of an eye or a snap of a finger. And so what were you going through? And if you were the perfect teenage daughter and your daughter or your son is absolutely the opposite of that, can you understand where they're coming from? Or are you just going to be overly judgmental and think they're a moron or they're rebelling or, of course, they're getting high or smoking? Look at them. Mm. Can you get empathetic? And and I, I know most parents can, but it doesn't it's not necessarily second nature because their view and their prism is their own upbringing. But your children are not you. Right. That is such a great statement. Your children are not you. And sometimes that's difficult as a parent to yeah. realize that, that they're, you know, you want to embrace the differences and 
and enjoy the fact that they're not you because there are so many things about my children that I wish I was more like. I don't know about you, but I see things about them and I think I wish I was like that. I had that characteristic. So yeah. Well, thank you so much, Elliot. How can we get in touch with you? You've mentioned already your website and your website is a brighter day. Dot info dot org. I'll go there too. It's not okay. info .org. Uh, my cell number, and I give this out. Parents are happy to, I'm happy to take these calls. I get them all day. Is 510-206-1103. And the email address is Elliot, E-L-L-I-O-T, two L's and one T at a brighter day dot info. And right. We're, and I'll... we're thrilled to send everything out for free. Oh, wow. That, we, that's so generous. We raise money totally separately through galas and golf and so forth, but we don't use our website and, and we, we don't use stress, depression, and tragedy to raise money with the same person that's experiencing this. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Elliot. I appreciate you coming on the show. I think that your message is so helpful and really encouraging to us as parents to get in there and, and do the work, communicate, have the time at the table in the evenings and find out what's going on in our children's lives. Heather, you've been great. It's people like you that are getting the word out and changing lives as well. Thank you, Elliot. Thanks for having me on your show.